Welcome back. Today we're going to set up a backup for your Windows PC using Veeam Agent Free and storing it on Unraid. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is to create a share on Unraid to store your backups. To do that, we're going to click on Shares, do Add Share. I'm going to name mine Backups. And for comments, I'll put in a quick description. I'm going to call this Data Share or Backups. In primary storage, I only need it to go to the array, so that's fine there. Everything else looks good. So go down and hit Add Share. Once that's done, let's scroll down to the SMB security settings. And I'm going to export that as yes. And on my demo server, I'm just going to leave it on public. If you need more security, then go ahead and change it from public to secure or private, whatever the case may be. And hit Apply. And then done. Now let's make sure we can browse there. I'm going to open up File Explorer and just see if I can browse to it. Backslash backslash 10.0.0.11 is the IP address for my server. And I'll put in the share name, which is backups. I'm just going to test that location real quick. Already got it typed in here, so I'm just going to hit enter. And it comes right up. Let me make sure I can write a file to it. So I'm going to go new folder. That works fine. Let's make sure I can delete. And that works. So we should be all set on that part of it. All right, next thing we need to do is to download the Veeam agent. I'm going to jump over to Veeam's download page. And I'll leave a link in the description for this location, so you can just go click on that. What we're looking for is the Veeam agent for Microsoft Windows, the free version. We'll hit download now. It's going to want you to create an account. If you already have an account on Veeam, then you can just put in your login information and continue on. I don't need to create myself another account. I've already got the file downloaded, so I will just jump over to there. But basically, all you're going to do is put in your name, your email, you know, the normal information, and then hit download. So I'll minimize this and go to my desktop, and you'll see it listed right there. So there's the file, the Veeam Agent Windows, and this is version 6.1.2.134. You'll double click on it to start the install process. While this is installing, let me tell you a little bit about Veeam. The Veeam Agent backup software will allow you to create a complete image of your machine. You can do the entire system, so you get an image of all the hard drives connected to it. You can do the environment settings, so it's basically just Windows and then your, your main C drive. Or you can do just file level backup. Personally, I do a complete image for my machine. It runs every night. I do one full backup once a week, and then I do incremental backups throughout the week. And as we get further in, I'll show you those options. All right, I've got my Veeam Agent installer on the desktop. I'm going to double click on it. Click Yes to continue. You know, it's the normal yes, continue, okay, whatever the options are. All right, and this window pops up, hit next. I accept. And then you just sit back and wait for it to install. The next window that pops up is going to ask if you want to run the Veeam Recovery Media Creation Wizard. And we do, so we're going to go ahead and leave that checked and then hit finish. On the Create Recovery Media page, we're going to select the ISO image. And then I'm going to include the decryption key. That's entirely up to you. Basically, it's just going to put the password in there for you. So if you forget it, you can still get your files back. There are some security risks to that, though, so if you don't want that out there, then go ahead and don't select that. You can see there it says, Includes decryption key for seamless restore from encrypted backups. Protects from password loss. That's all we're going to need there, so go ahead and hit Next. Then it's going to want to know the location that you want to store the ISO file. Typically for me, I change from Documents to the Desktop. And I'm just going to put Demo in front of here, just so I know it's not my normal workstation one. And then you hit Next, and then Create. And it'll download the files that it needs and compile them into an ISO file and store that on your desktop. And this process only takes about a minute. And once it's done, I usually leave a copy on the desktop just so I've got it. And I also put an external drive or a flash drive, either one. This recovery image file that it's creating is an ISO file. So you can just mount it as a drive in another system. You can burn it to a CD or you can use it in your favorite ISO tool that you use on a flash drive. You can boot up from that and then do a complete restore from bare metal. I mean, you can have absolutely nothing on the machine, brand new machine, something out of the corner that's been sitting there for years. Throw in that ISO file, boot it up. You can browse your backup across the network and restore. It's pretty fantastic. All right, once it's finished, go ahead and hit finish. And there's the file on my desktop. Definitely save that file someplace off your machine, just so if you need it, you've got it. All right, now if you look in the bottom right corner, you'll see a little green V icon down there. If you double click on that, it'll open up the Veeam software. And it says it's operating in free mode. If you want to apply a license, you can go ahead and hit yes. Since it's the free version, I don't install a license. I just hit no. I was hoping after I removed it that it would go through the full process, but let me just see if I can create a new backup and show you how to do that. So we're going to do add new job. All right, I guess I got to remove my job. All right, remove the job. Yes. All right, so once we open that up, it's going to want you to create a new backup job. So you can name the job whatever you'd like. I'll just leave it job Jeff PC. That's fine for me. Hit next. Now here's the options I was talking about earlier. You've got the entire computer, volume level backups, or just file level backups. I typically do the entire computer, which is everything. All the drives are attached to it, every bit that's on it. 
You can also include external drives if you want. USB drives that are plugged in. I don't do that because they're external. I don't have them plugged in all the time, so I'm not going to worry about that one. The volume level backup, my son's got like a fairly large drive full of games and stuff, and we don't need that information. So when I installed this on his machine, we just did the volume level backup, which is the Windows OS itself, basically just the C drive. And then the file level backup is just that. It's just for certain files, whatever you choose. I'm going to do the entire PC because this gives you the bare metal option. So we'll hit next. Then we're going to go to shared folder, which is going to go to our SMB share that we created earlier. We'll hit next. We'll type in the folder location for my demo server. It is 10.0.0.11 and then backups, backslash backups. Now my production server, mine's password protected for this drive. So you'll select this share requires credentials. You put in your user ID. Let's say, it, you know, it's just Jeff, which it's not, but that's what we'll say it is. And then your super secret password, whatever that is. Then once you hit populate, it should show the information here. It'll show you how much free space you have available and the total size. On my demo server, I don't have any of that, so I'm just going to deselect that. Down below, it's going to ask you how many backups you want to keep. The default is seven, and for me, that's fine. But you can up this, lower it, whatever you need. Just up, down, you know, basic stuff there. Over on advanced, I have it create a full backup once a week just so it's a complete backup of everything. By default, it just does incrementals. You have one backup and it does incrementals, which is fine, but I just like the extra security of doing a full backup. And the maintenance tab, you can have it check for storage level corruption. You can defragment the backups. And under storage, you can set the compression level and then the optimization for the storage. The last option is the encryption, and I definitely enable the encryption for it and then put in a super secret password. Let's go with super secret, and then I'll do a hint something of that nature, just so you know what it is. Then you hit next and then next again. And on the schedule here, you set up the time you'd like the backup to run. The default is 1230 AM daily. You can set it to be every other day or certain days of the weeks or whatever you'd like. I do every day. The next option here is if the computer is powered off at the time of the backup, what do you want it to do? You can have it skip the backup or you can have it backup once it's powered back on. I do backup once powered on. And then on my machine, I just have it keep running. But on my son's machine, I have it go to sleep because he's usually in bed by the time this thing runs. So just let the machine go to sleep. And then you can also have it lock the machine. You can have it log you off. Another nice option here is you can have it eject the drive. If you've got a USB drive attached to it, you can have it eject it so that if you get some kind of malware or something, it can't get to that drive, which is kind of nice. Once you've got your options selected, you hit apply. Then you can tell it to run the job when you click finish. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to leave it like it is and hit finish. Now to check on your backups, you can double click on that icon down there and it'll show you each backup for the seven days listed here. We don't have any backups now, so there's nothing there. You can hit backup now whenever you'd like, so you can just create a backup in the middle of the day or whatever you need. And to restore files, you can right click on that icon. You can go to restore. You can do the entire volumes or individual files. And by default, it'll use the location that you had selected for the backups. So it knows that it's a network storage for me. I'll hit next. It's already selected shared folder. And you can type in the location, which there's my default location. So it's going to be 10.0.0.11 slash backups. And then if you have shared credentials, user ID and password, you'd select that, put in the information, hit next. Allow you to choose a backup here. And then next, since I have no backups, there's nothing I can restore, obviously. Another nice thing is that you can choose backups that aren't on your machine, as long as you know the user ID and password for them. So I'm going to restore a file from my personal machine here. So I'm going to go to restore individual files and I'm going to go to my main server here, which is network storage. Yes. Shared folder. Yep. Backslash backslash backups. And I'm going to put in the password over here just so you can't see it. All right. Bring it back over. This is the new PC here and this is my old one. I still have backups from that just in case I need to restore something here. It wants me to put in the password for that encrypted backup. So let me type that in real quick. So now it's letting me into the actual file right there. So we'll select that image. We hit next. And then here's all the backups that I've got. These are all incrementals. I've got a full backup here and then another full down here. I've got it back 25 days. So I'm just going to pick some random one. Hit next. Okay. While this is doing its thing, why don't you join the collective by signing up for our newsletter to get monthly step-by-step -step guides on RAID news and other technology articles straight to your inbox. And be rest assured, then I'm not going to sell your data. So no worries there. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, that's set. So let's go into a file and restore something. You can see here, I've got multiple drives. I've got the C drive, the D drive, and the G drive. So I'm just going to, let's say this brother here. You can just right click on it. You can 
copy it to a location. If it was on your actual machine, like your actual backup from your own PC, you could write it right back to where it was at. I'm just going to do copy to, and let's put it on the desktop under a folder called test restore. That sounds great. I'll hit OK, and it writes the files. There it is. There's the files that's restored. I don't need it, so I'm going to get rid of that and delete. Once you're done with the restore, just go ahead and close that out. That's pretty much it. Quick and easy process. Veeam's a nice little software. The fact that they give it away for free, you can only do one backup a day, but for most people, once a day is fine. What do you think of Veeam? Do you think you'll use it on your system? It's pretty easy to set up. It's pretty robust. The fact that it's got some encryption built into it and it allows you to do bare metal recoveries. I've installed this on <laughs> hundreds of machines. It's it's kind of crazy. I've been using it for about 10, 12 years now. Rarely, rarely have I had a problem with it. So if you're looking for a backup for your Windows PC, give Veeam a try. So what'd you think of the process? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, check out one of these next, and I'll see you in the next one.